Throughout the storied history of the NHL, we've seen some juggernaut teams dominate the regular season, yet many of them didn't see that success carry over in the playoffs. Today, we've compiled a list of the 10 best teams in NHL history that failed to win the Stanley Cup. We've ranked these teams based on wins, points, and overall depth of talent. These teams looked incredible on paper, shattered records during the regular season, but fell painfully short of their ultimate goal in the playoffs. Let's dive in. 10. 2010-11 Vancouver Canucks For much of their history, the Vancouver Canucks didn't often find themselves among the NHL's elite teams. Despite reaching the Stanley Cup Finals twice as underdogs, losing to the New York Islanders in 1982 and the New York Rangers in 1994, they weren't considered dominant. However, in the 2010-11 season, the Canucks had a breakthrough year, winning the President's Trophy with a remarkable record of 54, 19, and 9, totaling 117 points. This success was largely attributed to the exceptional performance of Hall of Famers Daniel and Henrik Sedin. Daniel, with a league-leading 104 points, not only secured the Art Ross Trophy, but also the Ted Lindsay Award. Henrik led the league with 75 assists, showcasing their incredible skill and chemistry. The Canucks boasted another Hall of Famer in net with Roberto Luongo, who led the league with 38 wins and clinched the William M. Jennings Trophy alongside backup Corey Schneider. Ryan Kessler, a two-way center, had a career-high 41 goals and earned the Frank J. Selke Trophy. The team's defensive core included Kevin Bieksa, Christian Erhoff, Dan Hamhuis, and Alexander Edler, providing stability on the blue line. In the 2011 playoffs, the Canucks achieved impressive victories over the defending Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks, as well as the Nashville Predators and San Jose Sharks. However, their quest for the Cup was thwarted by the Boston Bruins, dropping Game 7 at home in heartbreaking fashion. Although the Canucks managed to win the President's Trophy again in the following season with 111 points, Points, they faced an early exit from the 2012 playoffs at the hands of the Los Angeles Kings. This marked the beginning of a rapid decline for the team, marked by changes in their roster, coaching staff, and management. Since their memorable 2011 season, the Canucks have made the playoffs just four times. 9. 2021-22 Florida Panthers Following years of rebuilding, the Florida Panthers had a remarkable regular season in 2021-22. They secured their first ever President's Trophy by amassing 122 points with a record-breaking 58 wins, 18 losses, and 6 overtime losses ranking 7th on the all-time single-season points list. The Panthers' surge to dominance was fueled by their potent scoring prowess. They led the league with an impressive 4.11 goals per game, totaling 337 goals, the highest in the salary cap era. Notably, this impressive feat was achieved under the interim coaching of Andrew Burnett after Joe Quenville's resignation earlier in the season. Several Panthers players delivered career-best performance performances during this remarkable season. Jonathan Huberdeau led the team with 115 points, while Captain Alexander Barkov showcased his skills with a team leading 39 goals. Sam Reinhardt contributed 82 points, Carter Verhage had a breakout year with 24 goals and 55 points, and Anthony Duclair added 31 goals and 58 points. The Panthers' defensive core was anchored by Aaron Ekblad and Mackenzie Wieger, and they received strong goaltending from Sergei Bobrovsky and Spencer Knight. The team also bolstered their depth at the trade deadline by acquiring Claude Giroux and hard-nosed defenseman Ben Sherratt. Despite their regular season success, the Panthers faced a tough challenge in the playoffs. After eliminating the Washington Capitals in the opening round, they squared off against their longtime rivals, the two-time defending Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning. However, the veteran Lightning squad proved too much for the Panthers, as they were swept in four games, putting an end to one of the most dominating regular season performance from a team in NHL history. 8. 
2015, 16, and 2016, 17 Washington Capitals. The Washington Capitals hold a unique place in President's Trophy history as one of only seven teams to win the award in consecutive seasons. Their remarkable performance in the 2015-16 season yielded 56 wins, 18 losses, and 8 overtime losses, accumulating a total of 120 points. The following season saw them achieve a nearly identical record of 55, 19, and 8, resulting in 118 points. During this period, the Capitals were led by their captain, Alex Ovechkin, who had a standout season in 2015-16, securing his sixth Rocket Richard Trophy with his seventh 50-plus goal season. Goaltender Braden Holtby was also instrumental in their success, winning the Vesna Trophy and earning an All-Star nod, while their head coach, Barry Trotz, was honored with the Jack Adams Award. In the subsequent season, Ovechkin's goal production dipped to 33, but Holtby continued to shine, finishing as the runner-up for the Vesna Trophy and claiming the William M. Jennings Trophy for the lowest goals against average. The Capitals' success in these two seasons was also attributable to the depth of their roster. Nicholas Backstrom stood out as one of the league's top centers, while Evgeny Kuznetsov was emerging as a prominent player. John Carlson played a pivotal role on the blue line, TJ Oshie contributed valuable secondary scoring as a winger, and Tom Wilson was evolving into a physical and disruptive force on the ice. Despite their regular season excellence, the Capitals faced disappointment in the playoffs, particularly at the hands of their arch rivals, the Pittsburgh Penguins. They were eliminated in the the second round in both the 2016 and 2017 postseasons, failing to advance to the Eastern Conference Final. Prior to their 2018 triumph, the Capitals had not progressed beyond the second round since their appearance in the 1998 Stanley Cup Final. However, in the 2017-18 season, the Capitals managed to overcome their previous playoff setbacks. Despite finishing sixth overall, they silenced their critics by winning the franchise's first Stanley Cup, marking a triumphant moment in their history. 7. 1992-93 Pittsburgh Penguins Despite securing consecutive Stanley Cups in 1991 and 1992, the Pittsburgh Penguins had never clinched the NHL's best regular season award. This changed during the 1992-93 season, when they posted an impressive record of 56 wins, 21 losses, and 7 ties, amassing a total of 119 points. Notably, this achievement marked the only time in Penguins history that they claimed the President's Trophy. What what makes this feat even more extraordinary is that the Penguins accomplished it while their team captain, Mario Lemieux, was sidelined for 24 games due to his treatment for Hodgkin lymphoma. In one of the most remarkable comebacks in NHL history, Lemieux returned to the ice and proceeded to win several prestigious awards, including an Art Ross Trophy, Hart Trophy, Ted Lindsay Award, and a Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy. The 1992-93 Penguins boasted a deep and highly talented roster. Four of their players, namely Lemieux, Ron Francis, Larry Murphy, and Joe Mullen, have since been inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Their coach, Scotty Bowman, also earned his place in the Hall of Fame. Additionally, the team featured a young superstar in Yaramir Yager, who would go on to become one of the NHL's greatest scorers and is a surefire future first ballot Hall of Famer. The roster also included key players, such as Rick Tockett, known for his rugged scoring abilities, a winger in Kevin Stevens, who scored an impressive 111 points Points, and goaltender Tom Barrasso, a former Vesna Trophy winner. The team was further bolstered by a promising young scorer in forward Martin Straka, and a physical shutdown defenseman in Ulf Samuelson, who patrolled their blue line. With Lemieux's astonishing return and the confidence gained from being two-time Stanley Cup champions, the Penguins advanced to the division semifinals and eliminated the New Jersey Devils in five games. Although they were expected to have an easier time against the New York Islanders in the division finals, they were ultimately upset by the determined underdogs in a grueling seven-game series. 
Following the 1992-93 season, the Penguins experienced a decline in their fortunes, and Lemieux retired for the first time in 1997. He would make a comeback in the 2001 season, helping the Penguins reach the Eastern Conference Final before failing to the defending champion Devils in five games. Lemieux eventually hung up his skates for good in the 2005-06 season, passing the torch to a rising young Penguin star named Sidney Crosby. 6. 2005-06 Detroit Red Wings Four years after their 2002 Stanley Cup victory, the Detroit Red Wings emerged as the dominant force in the NHL's first season under the new salary cap regime. They posted an impressive record of 58 wins, 16 losses, and 8 overtime losses, accumulating a total of 124 points. Remarkably, this point total still ranks as the sixth highest in NHL history. During this transitional phase for the Red Wings, they bid farewell to some longtime stalwarts. Captain Steve Eiserman retired after this season, and power forward Brendan Shanahan departed via free agency to the New York Rangers. Additionally, aging defenseman Chris Chelios was a mere shadow of the dominant blue liner he had once been during his younger years. However, the team found solace in the presence of defenseman Nicholas Lidstrom, who was at the peak of his playing career. Lidstrom would eventually assume the captaincy from Eiserman and had a standout season, recording a career-high 80 points. His exceptional performance earned him his fourth Norris Trophy, which would eventually become a total of seven such accolades. A new core of young talent, led by two-way forwards Pavel Dadsuk and Henrik Zetterberg, played a pivotal role in the Red Wings' success. Dadsuk had a breakout season, leading the team with 87 points and capturing the Lady Bing Trophy, a feat he would repeat for the next four consecutive seasons. Zetterberg followed closely behind with 85 five points. In the conference quarterfinals, the Red Wings faced the Edmonton Oilers, a team that had finished 29 points behind them in the regular season, led by Chris Pronger and trade deadline acquisition Dwayne Rolison. The Oilers stunned the hockey world by defeating the formidable Red Wings in six games and eventually advancing to the 2006 Stanley Cup Final. This unexpected turn of events appeared to mark the end of the Red Wings' era of dominance. However, two years later, Lidstrom, Dadsuk, and Zetterberg would once again lead the team to their fourth Stanley Cup victory in 11 seasons proving that the Red Wings remained a formidable franchise despite the challenges they had faced. 5. 1970-71 Boston Bruins Led by the legendary Bobby Orr, widely regarded as the best defenseman in hockey history, and prolific scorer Phil Esposito, the Boston Bruins secured their first Stanley Cup win in 29 years in 1970. The following season, in 1970-71, they appeared poised for another championship with one of the most remarkable regular season performances in NHL history. During that season, the Bruins displayed impressive offensive prowess, scoring a then-stunning 399 goals. This goal-scoring record remained untouched until the 1981-82 Edmonton Oilers shattered it with 417 goals. Their regular season concluded with a remarkable record of 57 wins, 14 losses, and 7 ties for a total of 121 points. These win and point totals stood as league records until the 1975-76 Montreal Canadiens achieved 58 wins and 127 points. Bobby Orr's performance during this season was nothing short of spectacular. He concluded the campaign with a career-high 139 points and became the first player in NHL history to reach 100 assists, collecting 102 in total. These assist and point totals remain unmatched single-season records for defensemen. Orr claimed the Norris Trophy for the fourth time that year in what would become an impressive streak of eight consecutive seasons and secured the second of his three consecutive Hart Trophies. Phil Esposito was another driving force behind the Bruins' success during that season. He shattered the NHL record for goal
goals, scoring an astonishing 76 and amassed a total of 152 points, setting a new benchmark. Esposito claimed his second Art Ross trophy during this season and went on to win four consecutive Art Ross trophies between 1970 and 1974. The Bruins also boasted a talented supporting cast. John Busick had a career-best season with 116 points and secured the Lady Bing Memorial Trophy. In the goaltending department, Gary Cheevers and Eddie Johnston provided solid campaigns. The team also had secondary scoring from Wayne Cashman, John McKenzie, and Derek Sanderson, earning them the moniker the Big Bad Bruins. Despite their stacked lineup, the Bruins faced a formidable challenge in the 1971 quarterfinals when they squared off against the Montreal Canadiens. Ken Dryden would go on to steal the series, shutting down the Bruins and eliminating them in a tough seven-game series. The Bruins would go on to win the Stanley Cup again the following season. However, they were never able to establish themselves as a dynasty like Dryden's Canadiens did later in the decade. 4. 1985-86 Edmonton Oilers As of the 1985-86 season, the Edmonton Oilers had firmly established themselves as the NHL's dominant team. Coming off back-to-back -back Stanley Cup victories, they were on the brink of joining an elite group that included the Montreal Canadiens, New York Islanders, and Toronto Maple Leafs as the only teams in league history to win three consecutive Stanley Cups. The Oilers, renowned as one of the most potent offensive teams in NHL history, showcased their scoring prowess by netting a staggering 426 goals during the 85-86 season. This marked the second highest goal total in their illustrious history, just behind their all-time record of 446 goals set in 1983-84. Their regular season performance was nothing short of impressive, as they clinched the President's Trophy in its inaugural season with a record of 56 wins, 17 losses, and 7 ties. This remarkable season saw Oilers captain Wayne Gretzky, at the peak of his extraordinary offensive abilities, lead the league with an unprecedented 215 points a single-season record that still stands today. The Great One extended his dominance by securing his seventh consecutive Hart Trophy and his sixth consecutive Art Ross Trophy. The Oilers also boasted a lineup filled with future Hall of Famers, including forwards Mark Messier, Yari Curry, and Glenn Anderson, as well as defenseman Paul Coffey and Kevin Lowe, and goaltender Grant Fuhrer. Coffey, with 138 points, continued to excel and clinched the Norris Trophy for the second straight season. Curry contributed 131 points to the team's offensive onslaught, while Anderson netted an impressive 102 points. In the division semifinals, the Oilers swiftly swept aside the Vancouver Canucks. However, they faced a memorable showdown with the Calgary Flames in what became a historic chapter of the Battle of Alberta. This thrilling series went the distance to seven games, but in a twist of fate, it was the Oilers who were eliminated. A seemingly routine attempted pass by defenseman Steve Smith inadvertently ricocheted off Fuhrer's pad and into their own net. However, Smith and the Oilers would go on to redeem themselves by winning the Stanley Cup in both 1987 and 1988. Unfortunately, their pursuit of a third consecutive cup was derailed again when Wayne Gretzky was traded to the Los Angeles Kings in the summer of 1988. 3. 1995-96 Detroit Red Wings The 1995-96 season was a significant one for the Detroit Red Wings, marked by high expectations and a sense of destiny. They etched their name in the NHL record books by achieving the single-season record for the most wins, totaling an impressive 62 victories while having just 13 losses and 7 ties. Their remarkable season tally of 131 points was second only to the 1976-77 Montreal Canadiens who amassed 132 points. The Red Wings roster during this period is widely regarded as one of the greatest in NHL history. An impressive 7 players from that team, including Iserman, Lidstrom, Coffee, Fedorov, Fetisov, Larionov, 
and Ciccarelli would eventually earn their place in the Hockey Hall of Fame alongside their esteemed head coach, Scotty Bowman. This star-studded lineup was further complemented by a strong supporting cast. The Red Wings boasted a reliable goaltending tandem in Mike Vernon and Chris Osgood. Vladimir Konstantinov was in his prime, serving as a formidable physical shutdown defenseman, while Keith Primo and Vyacheslav Kozlov contributed to Detroit's offensive depth. Chris Draper, Darren McCarty, and Kirk Maltby added grit to the checking line, solidifying the team's overall strength. Sergei Fedorov's stellar defensive abilities earned him a Selkie Trophy for the second time, establishing him as the league's top defensive forward. In net, Osgood and Vernon received the William M. Jennings Trophy, recognizing their efforts in achieving the lowest combined goals against average. With their sights set on capturing the franchise's first Stanley Cup since 1955, the Red Wings navigated their way to the West Conference Final by eliminating the Winnipeg Jets and St. Louis Blues. However, they faced a familiar foe in the Colorado Avalanche and were ultimately eliminated in six games. The Avalanche, led by future Hall of Famers Joe Sackick, Peter Forsberg, and Patrick Waugh, went on to secure their first ever Stanley Cup in franchise history. Undeterred by their previous season's bitter end, the Red Wings rebounded in the 1996-97 season. Despite slipping in the regular season standings and finishing fifth overall with 94 points, they had learned valuable lessons from their past experiences. They proceeded to eliminate the defending champion Avalanche in the conference finals and went on to sweep the Philadelphia Flyers in the Stanley Cup final. Two. 2018-19 Tampa Bay Lightning. Following their run to the Stanley Cup Final in the 2014-15 season and appearances in the Eastern Conference Final in 2015-16 and 2017-18, the Tampa Bay Lightning solidified their status as one of the NHL's most dominant regular season teams during the 2018-19 campaign. In that remarkable season, the Lightning amassed a record of 62 wins, 16 losses, and 4 overtime losses losses clinching the President's Trophy with an impressive 128 points and incredibly finishing 21 points ahead of the second-ranked Calgary Flames. Their achievement tied the league record for the most wins in a single season and marked the fourth-highest points total in NHL history. Furthermore, their 781 point percentage ranked fifth-best all-time. Notably, Lightning winger Nikita Kucherov delivered a career-best performance during during this remarkable season. Kucherov not only claimed the Art Ross Trophy for leading the league in scoring with 128 points, but also earned a Hart Trophy and the Ted Lindsay Award. His teammate Andre Vasilevsky received recognition as the Vezda Trophy winner, acknowledging him as the league's top goaltender. The Lightning's leadership and offensive firepower were further underscored by Captain Steven Stamkos and center Braden Point, each tallying over 40 goals and 90 points during the season. Contributions from Yanni Gord, Tyler Johnson, JT Miller, Ryan McDonough, and Alex Kalorn, with all of them reaching or surpassing 40 points, showcased the team's depth. On the defensive front, Victor Hedman's outstanding play earned him a third-place finish in Norris Trophy voting. Heading into the 2019 playoffs, the Lightning were heavily favored to win the Stanley Cup. However, they faced an unexpected and historic upset as they were swept in the first round by the underdog Columbus Blue Jackets, who had finished a distant 30 points behind the Lightning in the regular season. It stands as one of the most significant upsets in the history of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Despite the heart-wrenching defeat, the Lightning used it as a valuable learning experience for their players, coaching staff, and management. They never underestimated their opponents since then and went on to capture consecutive Stanley Cups in 2020 and 2021. 1. 2022-2023 Boston Bruins. The Bruins had a remarkable 2022-23 regular season, finishing as the champions of the Atlantic Division for the third time and securing the President's Trophy for the fourth time in franchise history. They achieved this with a record-setting 135 points, 65 wins, 12 losses, and 5 overtime losses, with the 65 wins setting a new NHL record. Throughout the season, they set various records, including the 
most consecutive home wins to start a season with 14. The fastest team in history to reach 80 and 100 points and the fastest team to win 50 games. Bruins coach Jim Montgomery also broke the league record for the most wins by a coach in their first season with a team. He surpassed the previous record of 58 wins, which had been held by Mike Babcock during his first year with the Red Wings in 2005-2006. However, despite their outstanding regular season performance and securing home ice advantage for the playoffs, the Bruins suffered a surprising upset in the first round at the hands of the Florida Panthers in a seven-game series squandering a 3-1 lead. This disappointing outcome made them one of the few all-time winningest regular season teams alongside the 2007 New England Patriots, 2001 Seattle Mariners, 1906 Chicago Cubs, and 2015-16 Golden State Warriors to not win their respective league's championship. Unlike the others, the Bruins were eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. The 2022-2023 season also marked the final campaign for both David Krejci and longtime Bruins captain Patrice Bergeron as they announced their retirements during the subsequent offseason. A tough end to a truly remarkable season. And there you have it. 10 teams that shattered records, ran through their regular season schedule, only to fall painfully short of their ultimate goal, winning the Stanley Cup. Let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree with this ranking, and if you'd add any teams to this impressive and not so impressive list. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for future videos. See you in the next one.